we're going to start with a simple streaming call. Then we'll add a function call with a single function, streaming. And then we're going to create a loop so that our calls can be executed without user intervention. So we'll achieve some kind of agent-like behavior. And then finally, we'll talk about how to do multifunction calls uh, with a loop so we can actually execute multiple functions in a row. To make a regular streaming function call, we import OpenAI and initialize our empty messages list. Then we write the code for our chat completion call with stream set to true. Then we initialize a response string to an empty string. And then we start a loop because the response we are receiving is a generator object. Then we look with dot get if it has a content in the delta because this is streaming. And then we append that chunk, look the content of that chunk into the responses string, which we have initialized. Then we simply print it with and equaling zero and flush through so we can see it in real time in the terminal. Then we simply return that responses. Then we create a loop and then we ask for user. After asking user input, we append that as the role user and we append the user input. Then we make the call to GPT with the user input. Well, actually, user input is not necessary because we are already putting it in the messages. We make our call. And then we append it to the messages, whatever response we get as the role assistant. And then we just print just to make a new line. So that's pretty much it. And now that we initiate it, as you see, we are getting streaming responses. To make a function call with GPT, we first define a function. Here in this case, a file, a function that reads files. Then we define a function mapping so that when we can execute the function later down the road, this is just a dictionary saying that read file equals to the read file function. Then we initialize our empty list and make the call with streaming true. After that, we define our functions list. This list can have multiple functions. In this case, it only has read file as the name. Now you put in your description and you define your parameters uh, of the type object. Properties here are the arguments and we are only looking for a file path, a string. And this is the path of the file to read. And we do require file path so that GPT returns a file path every time it calls this function. And we set the function called the auto. When we set it to auto, GPT has the ability to choose from any one of its functions and also do a regular response as we have seen in the previous example. Then we initialize the function name to none, regular response to an uh, empty string, along with function arguments to empty. Then we loop over the response object, generator object, which we are receiving from OpenAI. And then we check to see if the chunk has a get content. If it has a content, if it has a content, that means GPT is trying to return a regular response. Then we append that chunk to regular response and we simply print it. However, if the chunk includes a function call, then we check that by asking for dot get. Then we check if it is a name in the function call. If it does, we assign that to a function name. And then we say that our chunk is the delta. And then within that delta, we look for a function calls arguments and we assign it to function arguments chunk. Then we append that to the function arguments. Then we simply print the chunk so we can see the streaming response printed in the terminal. Then we return regular response function name and the function arguments. Then we initiate a loop and get user input. We append the user input to our messages. Then we get a response from GPT or uh, to receive whatever is returned from the GPT call function, regular response function name and function arguments. If we see that regular response object is not none, so it has content because we initialized it to none. And if GPT returns a regular response, then this will change and this condition will be true. Then we just append the regular response is the assistant role. These print empty print statements is only to make a new line in the terminal. However, if we do get a function name, if GPT had made a function call, we will have returned it and we print the name of the function. And then we get the function from our mapping because the function name will correspond to the dictionary key here, read file in this case, and we'll retrieve that function. 
Here we are checking if the function name equals the read file. We don't necessarily have to perform this check. We could have just said if function name. Then we actually load the arguments with json.loads function arguments. So this will be the arguments which we will pass to this function. Then we simply run that function and assign whatever the function returns, the function returns. In our case, our function will return the contents of the file path equaling whatever the contents are. And then we append as the role function. We give the name of the function and the content as whatever the function has returned. So this is pretty much it. When we run this and we can just say hi and we'll get a regular response. And then we go back to the beginning of the loop. Remember, we are running in under a while through loop. And then we can say, uh, please summarize the sample.txt file and it will do a function call and then it will stop and we can say summarize it and it says that echo hive is an excellent platform for coders who aim to create applications with gpt and that you can find uh, search for videos and find code download links at echohive.live as you see this one actually is a one-off interaction with gpt whether we get a regular response or a function name we always get the uh, chance to do a user input so you, uh, GPT has no ability within this loop to be able to respond or return a function name more than once. This is why next we are going to look at a loop within a loop, which allows GPT to more proactively call multiple functions in a row. I have actually created an agent I call auto AGI because I was frustrated with other agents that really wasn't working uh, predictively. You can look for the auto AGI video in my YouTube channel. The code for auto AGI and code for this project, the, uh, the links for the the links for the code will be in the description. So to create everything in the function called loop.py file remains the same, except our loop is different. Here in this case, we are introducing after right after getting the user input and appending it to messages, we create another loop. We initialize a loop boolean to true. And then we say, while well, this is true, then we enter another loop. If you remember, we didn't have the, se the second loop in the regular function call. What this loop is going to allow us to do is, unless we don't get a function call, then we remain in this loop. And if we get a regular response and not a function call, then we print the regular response and then go back to taking user input. So we enter the first loop, set the loop to true, get user input, and then enter the second loop and make the call to GPT and get regular response, function name and function argument. If we have the regular response, we append it as usual. And if we do have a function name, we do run exactly as what we have done before. But if we check, if we check to see if we don't have a function name, then we set the loop to false. So if GPT returns a regular response or a function name, it keeps uh, remaining in this uh, regular response uh, function name. Together, we still remain in this loop because uh, this means we'll never enter this condition and set the loop to false. But if uh, GPT returns only a regular response and not a function name, then we exit the loop and take user input. Let me demonstrate. If I just say hi, uh, we'll just get a response and then get back to taking user input. Let me actually demonstrate this while running the debugger. As you see, I have put a breakpoint for each condition. So now if I say hi, we see that we hit the regular response, we append it, and then we check, do we have a function name? No. So we check for this condition. Do we, have a, uh, do we not have a function name? That is true. We set loop to false. So this inner loop checks if our loop is true or false because it is false it breaks out of the loop and goes back into the higher loop and then goes back to taking user input on the other hand if i were to just ask summarize sample txt then we'll enter the loop and we'll get a call and we are getting a function call as you see we're going to skip the regular response because we did not receive a regular response because we have a function name we enter the uh, function call loop condition and we execute the function as you see 
uh, we have retrieved the function and we're going to load the arguments. Our arguments are the file path, which is sample.txt. And then we're going to execute that function right here with the arguments. And our function returned contents of sample.txt is whatever contents was. We are appending it to messages. And because we do, uh, and because uh, uh, this condition was not true, so we skipped it. And then now we are continuing and receiving a response. In this case, we are receiving a regular response, which is just a summary. The text from sample text is about echo hive. Okay. And then now we skip that. I mean, we go over it and then we check for a function name. This time we don't have a function name, and this, this is true. So we set loop to false. Therefore, we are able to break out of this loop and continue taking user input. If you are enjoying my uh, videos and you like this kind of content, do check out echolive.live where you can search all the videos I've created for YouTube and you can find the code download links. Now let's take a look at the multifunction call loop. The multifunction call loop is just like the function call loop, but this time we have multiple uh, functions. Here in this case we have a read file function like we had before and a write file function. The write file function returns successfully wrote to and whatever the uh, name of the file path was. And in our function mapping we added the write file. We initialize our messages per usual. We have our definition of the read file function but then we also have another function definition for write file. It describes the description and this time we have two arguments, one for the file path, the path of the file to write to, and the content, the contents to write to the file. And we are requiring both the file path and the content to be returned to GPT. We have set the function call to auto, so GPT can now choose from three options uh, to return a response, actually other four options almost to return a response, to return any one of the functions, or to return a response and a function call. And we are returning, obviously, all three of these things. We again have our loop within a loop. And we just simply, the only difference is, we simply check if we have a function name, because we can uh, find our function from our function mapping. Here we just execute that and return it to the GPT and everything else remains the same. All the code files for this uh, will be at Patreon. The link is in the description. Make sure to check out the Auto AGI video too. This is a project I worked uh, quite diligently on and I'm quite proud of. Uh, you can also find the code files for Auto AGI at Patreon as well. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video. Let me know what you think. Uh, about this or if you have any suggestions in the comments.